Trek to Yomi and Ghost of Tsushima, despite being games of different size and scope, both share the influence of Akira Kurosawa. Trek to Yomi is more upfront with that influence, utilizing camera techniques and the black and white visuals that feel more crafted than the simple filter slathered on. If only the combat was given the same treatment. The gameplay is simple but rough, and the differences between playing the game and looking at the game are significant enough to throw off the balance between the two. Tiyomi begins with Hiroki, a samurai in training who goes to find his master when the village they reside at becomes the target from a group of bandits. One thing leads to another, and Hiroki changes from a young boy to a hardened samurai who once again must defend his village from the violence set upon it many years later. The story of Trek Yomi is mostly straightforward as it follows Hiroki's tale of revenge in the less than four hours it will take to hit credits. There are three endings in Trek Yomi, with the three choices available to you in the last half hour or so of the game. By the time you get to those choices in Trek Yomi, I was already hoping for the game to be over. There's nothing wrong with a game being simple to play, so long as it is executed well and is fluid. Trek to Yomi only manages to get that when combat isn't involved, but it doesn't get everything right. The one thing it does get right is exploration outside of combat. During these moments, you'll have free 3D movement in areas with a fixed camera angle, exploring the environments for upgrades or ammunition for your ranged weapons. You can also take different paths that lead to an upgrade, or a shortcut to instantly remove an enemy encounter. There are some small puzzles near the end of the game that throw in some variety, but the puzzles are so simplistic it feels pointless. The puzzles are a series of matching three characters that you see in the environment on a puzzle wheel to unlock a pathway forward. There's no tension in these moments, and the only variation between any of them is the order the characters go in or a switch needed to be pressed to reveal a missing character. These don't appear until the end of the game, while earlier puzzles, if you can call them that, involve pushing down trees or moving carts so that you can move forward. Most of your time in Trek to Yomi is spent in combat, which takes place on a 2D plane. Ranged combat consists of three different projectile types with limited ammo, while melee combat is all about light and heavy attacks, thrusts, parries, blocks, and dodge rolls. Run out of stamina in a fight, and Hiroki will be winded and exposed to potential attacks from enemies. Combat techniques are unlocked as the story progresses, with the transitional attack from front to back being one of the most effective moves in the game. While combat moves look flashy, the implementation of them is not fluid, making it at odds with the visuals and cinematography of Trek to Yomi. Animations are stilted and stuttery, and pulling off a parry doesn't feel as satisfying as it should be, especially when the counter afterwards doesn't kill an enemy. In fact, the health of non-boss enemies feel inconsistent, with some armored foes taking fewer hits to kill than a standard one. Checkpoints are close enough that deaths don't set you back too far, but in a game where the combat doesn't feel great to begin with, the frustration and repetition settles in faster than usual. Combat just doesn't feel good in Trek to Yomi, which is surprising considering that Flying Wild Hog isn't really known for flubbing up the general combat feel. The combat is the worst thing about Trek to Yomi, and considering how much of the game thrusts you into it, that's a major complication. Still, the visual hook and look of the game is enough to score Trek to Yomi a 3 out of 5. The adventure is short enough to experience at least once, and the Akira Kurosawa influence is enough to see this journey through to the end. It's such a shame then that the rest of the game is a mess to deal with and can't quite match up to that visual look and feel.